Yo, doo-doos, what's going on? Uh, what's going on? How y'all been? Uh, we're jumping. This is part two of Alone in the Dark. Um, uh, if you guys seen last episode. Um, uh, we basically... Basically, um, last episode, which was the first very episode... It's with, um, we basically, this guy named, um, I forgot this character's name, um, but I do know the actor's name, um, David Harbour, if you guys are familiar with him, he was from Stranger Things, Hellboy, Violet Night, etc. Yeah, he was in those movies and TV shows. Um, he, um, yeah. The, um, the actress's name is David Harbour. I I forgot the um his character's name, but we basically came to this mansion in the woods for um a client, um we, along with our client. Her, her name is I think her name is Emily, from what I remember. Her name is Emily, and she's looking for someone named Jeremy. But we run it. But throughout the, uh, throughout the, what you call it? The, uh, throughout the, throughout exploring the mansion, we eventually run into the owners who were, I don't know, hiding somewhere. Uh, one of the owners said that Jeremy went missing, and so we have to look for him. And then at, while we was looking for him, this this is his room. And so we seen this. And David looked at this, um, this like picture, like on the ground here. It, it was with like a guy being in shock, with his like mouth wide open because he was like scared of something. And he was holding his own in too. And David, I'm guessing David is getting hallucinations from the picture. I guess the picture gave him hallucinations. And here we are. We're in like a like a abandoned city type, um, abandoned city type area. Um, yeah, it's very quiet out here. Um, I don't know if this is like actually a hallucination or like just a dream. I highly doubt it's a dream, but I think it's a hallucination. But yeah, we currently we're currently looking for Jeremy, but first we have to get out of this like hallucination thing. So, yeah, let's get straight into it. So, we basically gotta leave this. Leave. Leave the house. So. I'm assuming we gotta go downstairs. And you gotta turn on the flashlight, man. It's getting a little dark. I don't like how the doors are, like, closing on me, too. Okay. This game is interesting so far too. This game is 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 bad. Is interesting, motherfucker. Like, why the hell am I stuttering so much? Shit. Excuse me. Excuse me. What the fuck is that? Yo, what the fuck is that? Yo, what the hell is that? What the hell is that? Ew! Ew! Hey yo! Hey yo! You good? Are you good? Oh! Yeah. Oh fuck! Oh! Oh shit! Oh! Yo! What the fuck is that thing, yo? Oh my goodness! How do I heal up? How do I heal up? I don't know how to heal up, man. I have no clue how to heal up. Hold on. I gotta look in the controls real quick. How do you heal up? Control layout. Heal, heal, heal. Ooh, spring camera. Flash on reload. Stealth, range attack, melee. Examine, aim. There's no, like... Oh my goodness, bro. There isn't absolutely no, like, medical button or something. Alright. Oh, 
Two. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go over there, go over there. Bro, what the hell is that thing, bro? Is this like a monster with grass? With like grass on his body or some shit? I don't know, daddy. Yo, wherever this thing is, it's like going fast. They're going fast because it was gone. Like gone, gone. Oh my goodness, it's quiet. It's so quiet. Oh hell no, nah, hell no, nah, hell no! Nah. Let me let me get back. No, bro. Oh shit, this is creepy. Shit, this is so creepy. What the fuck? What the hell is going on? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Items can be thrown at enemies or used to distract them. Tap R2 to quickly throw the item. Hold R2 to aim. Okay. Yo, I can hear the monster's footsteps. Uh. Gotta go over right here. Go, 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 go. Thank you, daddy. All right. Where am I even going though? Like, what the? What is this? What did that picture do to us? Huh? I don't want to run, man. It's quiet, man. I don't trust that sewer. I don't trust being in their sewer. Hello? Okay, no one isn't there. I, I don't think I gotta go over there anyway. I gotta go in here. Yep, I gotta go in here. Oh, let me get that axe. Hold up. Let me get that axe. Hatchet, weapon. Let's go, daddy. Holy. How do I switch it? Okay, that's... Okay. Okay, that's how you, um... What's it called? Use uh, the, um, the medic supplies. Okay. You gotta, like, put the right stick. Got like a whole race stick or something. Gotta get a key. I can't go that way. Then where am I supposed to go? Is that the key? No, it's just a bell. I need a goddamn key, bro. Where the hell am I gonna find a key for that thing? Am I gonna find it in, like, one of the buildings, maybe? I think I do. I think I do because there's, like, a light to that building on. So I'm gonna assume that it's unlocked. Wait. What's that? Oh. Our item. Another tricycle. Uh, oh, another weapon? Holy shit, let's nice. go. Oh, no motherfucker! Oh, 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 shit! Oh my goodness. Get it, take the axe, please. Okay, so that's how you use an axe, okay. Shit, man. At least I didn't get hit. That's a good thing. Okay. I can hear, like, dumping. Dumping going on. Shit, dude. Where are you at? Oh, there you are. Are you fucking kidding me? There's two of them? Oh, fuck. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me get rid of you. Let me get rid of you. How do you use the axe? I'm, bro, I'm trying to get the I'm trying to get the axe, bro. How do I switch? How do I switch? I'm trying Ah! Motherfucker! 
Oh wow, he's like dodging. Oh. Okay, that's a, okay, 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 okay. I got it. Okay. Oh, holy! Oh yeah, motherfucker. Oh. Oh yeah, daddy. Fuck. Him. Oh. 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 Oh yeah, he's trying. He's trying. Oh shit! Get headshot, daddy. Holy. Let's go. Let's fucking go, bitch. Let's fucking go, man. Oh my goodness, daddy. Okay, I, f I found the entrance. Okay. What is this? Johnny the Conqueror. -er -er. Roots of medicine. Who the fuck are you? Don't let him get inside, Conqueror. They're not the good guy. Are you? Is this your store? There are no owners here. We both strangers in Jeremy's store. Jeremy did this. How? The pack with the dog man. Jeremy warned us, but we didn't think much of it. So Jeremy did this shit? I'm Detective Edward Carnby. I was hired by Jeremy's niece to find him. Oh yeah? How much you paying you? $150? <laughs> Damn, $150 so is crazy. No money's worth the knife. Thank you, man, Compare. No, nah, not if I can help it. You know, I think Jeremy's hiding in a way we can't find him. He has this juju necklace that guides him. The talisman? Talisman. Right. It's some magic charm he got from Miss Jackson down the street. The voodoo priestess. You know surprising things, Compare. Oh, yeah, wait. Lower. I think yeah, I know the voodoo. I locked the gate to save her place from all the ghouls and goblins getting inside. Maybe if you go there, you can find some clues to show you the way. Thanks. I'll have a look. Okay, okay. I, I know what he's talking. I know what he's talking about the voodoo. He's talking about um what we read in the last episode. Uh, where that woman was writing something in like the Bible. Betsy's keys. There are three keys on a chain. One that opens up the Miss Jackson's place in the French Quarter. Then there are two belongings to Deserto. Deserto, whatever. One for the clerk's office and one for the library. Okay. But how am I gonna know which one's which, though? What's the use? Find Miss Jackson's place to learn more about Jeremy's talisman. Okay. All right. So, oh, let's talk with this guy. You want to come along? Nah, I'm gonna stay here for a while. Okay. Anything I can do for? Sorry, I didn't catch your name. Yeah, what's your name? Batiste. Just tell my sister Lottie I'm alright. Oh. See it. Oh, Batiste. Okay, so his name is Batiste. So what else? All right, I'm heading out. Be careful out there. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. First, I gotta look for supplies, though. I need supplies. What's this? Preserved reptile. Oh, okay. So that one's for the goat without horns. I'm still. Like I said last episode, I'm still more concerned about that Blair Witch looking item on the top. Hello? Hello? I cannot, I cannot get anything out of that box. Damn man, all these fucking masks. Where are these Egypt? Are these Egyptian masks? They look like Egyptian. Hmm. All right, let's head out. Okay. Yeah. Gotta get my axe out. Hold up, before. Let me reload my weapon real quick. I'm already out of fucking ammo but I oh, soon, man. Only got like four rounds. 
Ah, shit. Oh, what the fuck are you? Ew. Where are you supposed to be? Hold on, I want to get this, uh, this hose. The, pi the pipe, whatever. Okay. Dude, I gotta get more ammo for my fucking revolver. Uh, how else am I gonna fight these fuckers? Especially the ones that are gonna be powerful and shit. For example, like that guy right there. Wait. I forgot. Um. How are you supposed to throw stuff again? How are you supposed to throw stuff? Range attack, opportunity, aim, pause, consume, melee. I don't know. Hmm. Wait, which? I'm trying to figure out, right? How am I going to throw an item? Because I don't have enough ammo to fight this guy, and it's gonna take ages for him to fucking. Oh shit! Never mind. He's coming. Oh, he look ugly, daddy. What the fuck? Go 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 go. <gasps> shit! 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 Go, 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 go! Go, motherfucker! Go! He went there! Go, 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 go! Fuck, 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 Finally, got more bullets. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, look at him, look at him. He not coming. Yeah, he can't get through that gate. Let's go, daddy. Oh, shit, man. It's more down. Fuck. Oh, what the fuck are you? Oh, uh, dodge. Oh, yeah. Move out the way, move out the way. Oh, 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 get fucked, get fucked, daddy. Get the forget, get your ass fucked. Uh huh. I'm pretty sure they heard that. Okay. Oh! Oh, what the fuck is this acid? Oh no! Are you gonna come up or not? Are you fucking kidding me? Embrace your weapon! Oh yeah, I, I definitely don't got the fucking. I don't got the energy to fucking fight this guy. Damn. Run, motherfucker! Oh! oh, fuck! That shit scared me. Holy shit. Come on, uh, go on, go on, go on, go on! Go, 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 go. I recognize this place. It's Miss Jackson's seance parlor. Let's see if she's got any information on Jeremy's talisman. Okay. Bro, come on. How am I gonna even fight these people, bro? These little mutants. Shit, man. I don't have enough. It's the talisman, like the one in the painting. Oh, I seen that in like the loading screen too. Talisman. Okay. An old talisman shape over centuries. The engarving of the numbers looks to be less than a hundred years old, but base could be farm, but from antiquity. In Quandy, I cannot, I cannot say that. The polished black sunstone in the middle has a glass finish, and occasionally gives the impression of hiding a picture within itself. I mean, it doesn't look like it hides anything. Use the talisman to get back to their Cito. All right, so we gotta get back to his ass. I think it's meant for the talisman. Oh, a puzzle. Is this a code? It needs numbers, like coordinates. Maybe there's something in Jeremy's notes. 
Jeremy notes. Let me see. It wait. Talisman. The uh, Jeremy's thoughts. Nope. Okay, this is weird. This is weird. How am I gonna figure this thing out? So you could rotate it. Damn it, so we not only can we only well not only we, that we could find a code right, but we need to also rotate it. First number goes to the largest ring. What largest ring though? This one? It has seven. Like that, maybe? Bro, this is weird as hell. How am I gonna fucking fuck up figure? Oh wait, is it green? It's our voice cracking. The green, does the green mean something? What the fuck, bro? How the hell? Switch this. Uh, that maybe? Hmm, I don't know. Oh, no, I keep I keep on going to the fucking pause menu. Changing notes. Detective Combi hesitated to buy into the stranger's explanation, but it was all he had. You recognize the place, it was Miss Jackson sent. A talisman, get back to the receipt. Okay, the hint is look for the number combination on the talisman. Sex matchsticks in your inventory. The first number goes to the largest ring. Hmm. Talisman sabbatics. Talisman with black sunstone, an ancient navigational tool found inside a chenier. I think that's in Spanish because it has an accent. The E has an accent. Along the Bayo, 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 Tarnisti. The old grave was uncovered by oil riggers and said to have unleashed a vagabond, a vagabond devil that massacred its finders. Three numbers needed to span a bridge between the scapes of dream and memory. Memory. Keep on starting a lot. According to Stern, now where I want to be, but it's a start. Three, five, eight. Okay. Three, five, eight. Okay. Okay, so it said the first number goes to the largest ring. Largest ring. Okay. First number goes to the largest ring. It was three. Three, right? Three, five, eight. Three, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. Got it. Let's go, Daddy. That was so easy. What the father? Something. A place? Where is that? Oh shit! It's where you at? Where you think? Huh? Uh oh. What the fuck? Hello? Hello? Bitches? Bitches? <sighs> yo, I want. Yo. Okay, 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 okay. That, that was part of the wall. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's see who's there. Detective, I was wondering when you were going to show up. Who's this? Mrs. Thompson told me you were here. I understand you are working for Jeremy Hartwood's niece. Uh, yeah, I guess so. I mean, you're not wrong. We came here for her uncle. I just didn't expect... 
I didn't expect this. You are Dr. Gray, right? That's right. You don't happen to have some identification, Detective. I'm not keen on having strangers prying into my business. What? So you're... Oh, Detective Edward Carnby, Decatur Street, New Orleans. Enjoying the view carré, Detective? Those old French quarters, the voodoo people, the gangsters. I'm sure you live an exciting life. The gangsters. Oh, it's not quite like the stories, Doc. Just trying to make a living. Aren't we all making a living? Well, welcome to DeSetto, Detective. I hope DeSerto. your time here will be useful. Now, what can I do for you? Why don't you tell me where I can find Jeremy Hartwood? <laughs> Why wouldn't that make for a short visit? I wish I could tell you, but I'm afraid I don't know. A drink, detective? Anything brandy? I oh, think he knows. I think he's just denying it. Detective. It's a pretending and lie. Armagnac or cognac? Oh, lying, not pretending. You know, just give me the cheap stuff. I'm not much of a cop. Having low standards is not a virtue, detective. Give me beer. Let me see if I can broaden your perspective. What can you tell me about Jeremy? Yeah, tell us about Jeremy. I wouldn't want to go into details about his condition. Doctor, patient confidentiality. I'm sure you understand. Sure. But he is crazy. And he's gone missing. Why? He probably got possessed by a demon. Try this. He probably got, got possessed Ooh, by a demon. Good. Got a bite? <laughs> it's called a side. The trick is not to be afraid of the tartness of the lemon. What the fuck is a sidecar? Don't overdo the triple. Who sake. names a who names a type of beer like a sidecar? Okay. What can you tell me about Jeremy? Yes, please tell us about Jeremy. Well, let me think. He is an anxious man, constantly worried about events not presenting themselves according to his model of predestination. Mm -hmm. He complains about things not being carried out in the right order, and that some things simply shouldn't be. Is any of this helpful to you? Uh, not really. Uh, I was hoping for some direction where to look next. Yeah. I'm sorry. I have nothing for you then. You should talk to my orderlies. They have been looking for him for a while now. Damn. I'm sure they would appreciate your help. Yeah, I ran into Batiste earlier. Come to think of it, he... He might have given me a lead. Oh, excellent. So your investigation is already underway. Batiste. I'm gonna go, but I'm sure we'll meet again. I highly doubt it. To it. Safe returns. I highly doubt it. Oh, chapter two. What's this chapter? Oh, eight. Okay. Okay, so we're out of hallucination or whatever, or no? Okay, yeah, I think we're out. How did you... Where did you go? It's kind of a long story. I was just talking to Dr. Gray. You disappeared. No. It's not what you think. Have you... Have you found anything strange going on here? Yes. Everyone is being incredibly evasive and I can't figure out why. No, I mean something... You can't explain. Paranormal, even. Yeah. Detective? Have you? I really need you to get yourself together. I can't do this alone. Forget it. I'll figure it out. Do you want to come see Dr. Gray? No. I want to I want to try something out. With this talisman, I think I can follow Jeremy to the place he mentioned in the book. What was the name? Do you remember something Spanish? Tarawea. Tarawea. That's where I need to go. Okay, so we gotta go Tarawea. Are you gonna be alright? Yeah, of course. Go talk to Dr. Gray. We'll rendezvous later. Okay. Mm. This okay. talisman brought me back from the French Quarter in the blink of an eye. If Jeremy can travel so easily, then he could be hiding anywhere, even Tarawea. If he can do it, so can I. I just need to figure out how the talisman works. Okay. What is this? Rubber stamp.
a little weird. Why does it look like a dick? Why does it look like a dick, bro? Oh my goodness. Okay, uh, oh damn, a radio? Isn't Alistair gonna be talking? You know, Alistair from Hasbin Hotel. <laughs> Is it gonna work? Holy shit, daddy, it worked. Oh my goodness. Hello, anyone home? Broken plates. Paul, you're right about the plates on the boiler and the clock. They have been sabotaged, and I think I know who did it. They have something to do with Jeremy's episodes and how he seems to disappear at night. Right now, it's important that you keep an eye out for any of the pieces. I want to find out if I can repair the plates. Mm. Let me know if you find any of them. Lottie. Tell Lottie. Lottie to take a look at the well in the kitchen garden. Take a look at the well in the kitchen garden. Okay. Take a look at the well in the kitchen garden. Hmm. Another, cl another clue. Staff and patient directory. Dr. Elmore Lee Gray is DeSetto's chief doctor. Accounting and all administrative work is handled by me, Paul Waits. Magdalena Thompson, or Mags, is responsible for the household. Jean-Baptiste and Charlotte Tabois are responsible for keeping the guests' medical regiments in check. Finally, Jack Chance is our gardener, who can occasionally be seen in the conservatory, but is, for the most part, busy outside. Mm -hmm. There are currently six guests at Dosetto. Malcolm McCarthy and Ruth Talant reside on the first floor. Jeremy Hartwood, Elisabetta Perosi, Grace Saunders, and of course, Cassandra Beauregard live on the second floor. Okay. Jeremy is also part in this, too. He's also in this. He's just a patient. It says it on the paper. A patient. It doesn't say on the, um, the, like, more clear version. So, what even happened to him is a real question. Room key number six. Okay. It's with a flower. Rose. It looks like a rose to me. Got a third clue. Repairing the boiler. I saw you notice in the boiler room. You should know Mr. Chance won't be coming back. I got no business being in there myself, but you can take a valve from the wine cellar if you want to try to stop the steam pouring out. Be careful. Mm. Valve from the wine cellar. Okay. A doo doo. Alright, let's see what else is in this library. What the hell? Some beer, we got scissors, so is this like supposed to be a salon or something? Yeah. It must be a salon mixed with a fucking library. Okay, we got another item. When it makes you worse. Okay. Files, patient files, another clue. Cassandra Beauregard, the okay. beloved author. Very exciting, isn't it? What do you want to put down for a reason for admission? What her agent told us. Cassandra suffers from writer's block and needs to finish her moving picture script before the end of June. Mr. Chardot suggests Cassandra's heavy use of barbiturates is holding her back and risks ruining her career. Damn. And how should we summarize her personal history? Let's keep it short. Cassandra Beauregard is a beloved crime author who managed to pull herself out of poverty and into stardom. Five years ago, she tried killing herself by jumping off a balcony. The oh, incident don't do that. The cripple and now relies heavily on her wheelchair. And for diagnostic impressions? Cassandra suffers chronic back pain following her suicide attempt. Wow. She self-administers morphine to keep herself ambulant but has become addicted and the desired effect is now lost. The drug abuse clouds her mind and she is unable to focus on real life. 
So she was on drugs. This insight, she instead makes up stories to fill out the gaps in her own thought process, resembling the Korsakoff syndrome. Oh, bravo, doctor. How will you treat her? First of all, she needs to be weaned from her drug addiction, and hopefully it will resolve her compulsive lying. Then look into permanently numbing her pain in her back through surgery. Finally, deal with her suicidal thoughts. Fantastic. With such a short time before June, I really hope she gets better soon. We will do what we can. Hmm. That is a little sus. I feel like... I feel like they're, like, lying about this, so I feel like they're not going to be able to help her. So, she was on drugs? Or she was just abused with drugs? I think she was just abused with drugs and not on drugs because it says drug abuse. But, I, 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 think, she, I think she was on drugs, though. No. Because she tried committing suicide, she had back problems, and she was, yeah, she was on drugs. Uh, damn. Okay, so, she was on drugs, she tried killing herself, she was dealing with back problems. I thought she was getting, like, insulted with drugs. Like being pressured to do drugs, but no. That's what I thought, but it's a drug addiction and treatment plan section, so yeah. <clears throat> Alright, next section we got six pages. Oh shit, it's that daughter. It's that daughter from um last episode. When the um when the little um little the little girl from the last episode, Grace Sanders. Grace Saunders, 11 years old. Reason for admission? The mother insists on strict supervision by a proper gentleman to avoid further perversion of Grace's adolescence. Okay. Personal history? Grace's family possesses modest wealth and status. Her childhood seems ordinary, spending most of her time with private teachers and family friends. Uh -huh. Grace's father recently passed away, leaving her mother the sole caregiver. Wow. And diagnostic impressions? Grace has trouble dealing with her father's death. She is willingly suppressing her feelings on the matter and isn't properly acknowledging the trauma she suffered. That's so easy. Any planned treatment? Grace needs nothing out of the ordinary. She simply needs parental guidance. Eventually, we can work on her feelings toward her father. Thank you, Doctor. I'll finish the paperwork and get her installed. Okay. So, the daughter... So, her name is Grace. So, we now know her name. Grace Sanders. She was in the last episode. So, was this... Let me see a date. Okay. What's, what's this woman's name again? Cassandra... Cassandra? I'm gonna just call her Cassandra. Cassandra was on 1930, and Grace was on 1928. So this was before, um... Cassandra. Okay. Malcolm McCaffrey. Malcolm McCarthy. 54 years of age. Reason for admission? McCarthy admitted himself to Dossetto, stating simply that he needs some damn rest. And personal history. McCarthy claims he used to work as a lawyer in Baton Rouge, but says he can't go into details because of some legal dispute. His background remains largely a mystery, except for the occasional clue that he drops in conversation. Okay. <clears throat> and diagnostic impressions. McCarthy is an anxious man and an alcoholic. He often tells half-truths due to some deep-seated inability to trust other people. So he'd be and drunk. How will you treat that? McCarthy will take some time to open up. Spending time with Jack's dog or the child should be good for him. Their harmless nature will help build his sense of trust. Thank you, Doctor. Okay, so Malcolm was dealing with alcohol, so he was an alcoholic, so he was getting drunk a lot. And I'm surprised that they didn't mention that he was 
insulting people, especially as one of his family members. I'm actually surprised because most people who are on who are alcoholics they do get they do tend to get drunk a lot and they do like to constantly insult insult like one of their um like their daughters their sons and every other family member but okay and, and malcolm's page and malcolm was one year before grace because grace was 1928 december 16th and malcolm was may 19th 1929 so this was a few months later after grace Okay. Okay, next we got Elise Elise Be Elisa Beta Pers Perosi? Mm, I don't know how to say that word. I, I don't know how to say her name. Elizabeth Perosi. Okay, Elizabeth. years old? What should I put down as reason for admission? Well, Perosi broke into Dorsetto and was found wandering the Grand Parlor. She was confused and suffered partial amnesia. She insisted she belonged here and offered to pay for her stay. Right. What do you make of her story? Perosi mm. claims to have been a member of the Astarte Artist Colony some 20 years ago. Damn. A claim that seems contrafactual due to her young age. She looks to be, and even thinks she is, 33 years of age. That would make her a child at the time. It seems fair to say that Perosi's story is untrue. Deliberately so, or not. I mean, it sounds Diagnostic untrue. Diagnostic impressions? Do you have anything? Perosi's story is peculiar, because she retracted her story about the artist colony. She no longer claims to be the same person as Elisabetta Perosi, However, my staff's research has confirmed there was a Perosi at that time who was in her early thirties. I suppose this case will take some time to investigate. How will you go about it? So there were two? I to contact the real Perosi, but it seems the whole colony disappeared one night. September 29th, 1915, during a hurricane. I will have to take it slow. And figure out what this spell of impersonation could have been. Oh, I'm sure it will all clear up eventually. Thank you, Doctor. Mm. This one is a little bit weird. So they're saying there were two proceeds? There were like two of her? Are y'all sure that like she didn't have no fucking sis a twin sister or nothing? Cause I, cause I'm thinking about that. Like, what if she had a, a fucking twin sister with like the same name, same age too. Hmm. And this was 1927. So this was before Grace and before Malcolm, or before Malcolm. Sorry about that. All right. Last but not least, we got Roof Talent. Uh, Roof. Roof. Uh, you know what? I'm just gonna call her Roof. Um, I'm just gonna say Roof. All right, not her last name. And sh and Lus. Uh, yeah, she was la She was also in last episode. Yeah, I recognize her. Um, Ruth Talon, 29 years of age. Reason for admission? Uh, Ruth's father wishes that his daughter be removed from New Orleans nightlife for the foreseeable future. Wow. He fears that her overly free spirit is tarnishing the family's reputation. Oh, so why are you thinking about that? Personal history? Ruth comes from considerable wealth. Her family owns several hotels and restaurants. Unlike the rest of the family, her sense of adventure has taken her around the world, including France during the Great War as a photojournalist. The last decade, she has provoked many rumors of being a debauched flapper. Bordering on nymphomania. And diagnostic impression? Okay. Despite her father's frivolous reasons for her to be admitted, Ruth does seem to provide an interesting case. She is refreshingly open and doesn't shy away from talking about her life during the war or her continuous celebration after returning to the States. She is admittedly a sexual deviant and feels oh, no remorse. And her treatment plan? 
Simply staying at Dorsetto should do wonders for Ruth. If not, at least for her family's reputation. Ruth doesn't need to change, but with therapy I might be able to share with her some sympathy towards her family. I doubt she will settle down and become as dull as the rest of them, but at least she might try to be more discreet in the future. Okay. Okay. 1928. So she was also... Uh... Okay, so her problem was dealing with sexual deviant. I don't know how to say that word. And she, and she had no remorse after that. Wow. And it looks like, and I guess her father tried to kick her out of the family because, like I said, like they said in the admission, like his um her father wanted her to be removed from New Orleans nightlife and he felt like it was it felt like, he felt like she was tarnishing the family like tarnishing the family's own reputation and shit damn okay and she was before she was before Elisabetta she was before well, after... No, 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 no. No. Okay. She was 1928. She was one year after Elizabeth. Because hers was at 1927. And she was before Malcolm. And she was before Grace. Well, not really because both for her... Both Grace and Ruth were taken in the same year. So this was both in present time with Freedom. Okay. Except for Jeremy. Hmm. Okay, so Jeremy is the only one that, that didn't get patient. Because y'all remember... Y'all remember earlier um, in one of the clues, in one of the papers? Matter of fact, hold on, let me show you. Shut up, shut up. Shut your bitch ass up. Trying to see something. Broken plates. No, wait, yeah, this one, this one, this one. There were at least... One, two, three, four, five, six. Six, six patients. And Jeremy is not the only one that was in the files. That makes me wonder, right? Did he go missing? Did he go missing when these file, um, when these patients were like present at that time? Because he's the only one that that didn't get the um, that like quote didn't get in the um, get in the files, like in the patient There's files. There's no way I can get into this thing. Better leave it alone. So this is a safe. We can't get into that right now. Okay. Yeah, that yeah that is a little sus, man. I feel like Jeremy is like the like this bad guy. It's just like whole like this whole story. I feel like he is a bad guy in the story. All right, what's over here? Oh, we're back here. Now what? Where am I going now? Mm, a few more puzzles. A few puzzles throughout the mansion. Right now, we're in the stair hall. Yeah, man, this place is fucking huge as hell. Hmm. All right, let's. Hmm. Guess we're gonna have to find out next episode. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna save this shit. Save this. Replace this. This. Oh wait, no, I can't do it. Wait. There we go. There we go. There we go.
delete that. How you how do you delete that? Okay. Never mind. You know what? Just leave it alone. All right, y'all. I'm a I'm a fucking end it here because I got I got some editing to do and my recordings cannot last that long. All right, I gotta edit all this shit. All right. All right, we'll find out uh, where we gotta go. I'll figure out where we gotta go next. So we still got like a lot of puzzles to do. Um, we still got some in the kitchen garden. So got some in Dr. Grace, no, in clerk's office. And yeah, and there's and there's still some blocked areas, and there is a few um locked areas too, and there is also a fucking bolted area too, in dining room. So yeah, let's hopefully we could find find something next episode. All right, right now I'll see y'all on the flip side. All right. Stay tuned for part three, and I'll see y'all gats later. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bye-bye. Ha-ha. Uh -huh.